It's a concept you probably know best from shows like the CBC's Dragon's Den. Young entrepreneurs competing for the cash and support they need to grow and thrive. For the past few years, it's been hard for emerging Canadian tech companies to secure that kind of help, but that is changing. Tonight, our senior business correspondent, Amanda Lang, takes us inside Startup School. Let's say you make some t-shirts. They're awesome, and you want to sell them online. ShopLocket is one of Canada's newest startups, but it very well could be the next big thing. Talk about complicated. You're just selling some t-shirts. We want to be a billion-dollar company. We want to be a large, sustainable company that powers the next wave of merchants. Catherine Haig's business is a site that helps users set up an online storefront, making selling a product as easy as sharing a photo. Simply create your product and embed it anywhere. And ShopLocket also got a little help getting started. So I thought we should take a look at this. ShopLocket um, got lucky. It was a winning forward. recipient of money from a tech accelerator, sometimes called Startup School. They'll be gearing up for their 10 minutes in front of our investment committee. These programs give young companies knowledge, contacts, and yes, cash, up to $200,000. One of the venture funds is Extreme Startups in Toronto. One of the first in Canada, it has a kitty of $7 million to dole out to up to 10 startups a year. Accelerators are suddenly springing up across the country, from Vancouver to Montreal. You're just so ill-prepared. If it sounds like an episode of Dragon's Den, you're not far off. I don't see a bottom line or a, any kind of cash to it, so for that reason, I'm out. And just like the Dragons, Listen, these venture capitalists great. also hope to make money. They take a stake in every one. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Here's how it works. These entrepreneurs are waiting for their final stage interviews for Extreme Startup's fall session. The competition here is stiff. How's it going? After more than 100 applications, the group has been whittled down to a lucky few who will make their presentations to some of Canada's top venture capitalists. Of those, just five tech startups will get into the incubation program. So, you got this really great idea. To there are 17 event. candidates Maybe hoping to win today, including Picatick, a site that helps you promote, sell, and manage sell events, Flyerbug, a platform Flyer to share and compare grocery out. prices, it gathers grocery pricing updates from savvy users, and even one that's the brainchild of three former RIM employees, BBDo, a site that makes it easy for people to find classes and activities online. Cool activities nearby that fit your schedule. Outside the boardroom, there are last minute discussions with partners and final prepping of presentations. The stakes are high. All right, this is attendee, so if you can start with a 30 second overview. Sure. Inside the boardroom, they have just 10 minutes to make their pitch and convince a tough audience. How did you get passionate about, about this particular problem? Who's your primary competitor? That fragmentation keeps them very unproductive. What's the reaction then amongst the investment community? So we've got 70%. These young entrepreneurs are facing some seasoned players in venture capital. Did you, did you not intend for it to be the trade and industry conference space? Yeah. I, I got confused by that question. Now the hard part, waiting for the winners to be announced. Um, there's a bit of nervous, nervousness, obviously. Um, there will be tough questions. Hey guys, this is Dimitri. Dimitri Michev wants into the program. For the money, yes, but it's the networking opportunity that is priceless. So get the right people um, in the room. If you have a good idea and you have a good business plan, money will come. But you know, help from people who've done it before and people with you know broad connection in the investor base uh, in the tech sphere is crucial. His startup is called Symmetrade. It's a social network for trading stocks. If you follow just five people and you don't want to pay attention to the rest of the network, you see what those five people are doing. Can you talk through your funding history and uh, has that been a red flag raised by these guys? I want to find the best traders and I want to invest like they do. And if you don't win this competition, what does it mean for your the future of Symmetrade? I don't really know. That's the magic of you know, this whole experience. It's completely unpredictable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you competing with the likes Past winners like Haig confirm the program was just what her business needed. It gives you a support group, a network that you can actually fall back on, people to look up to and successes that you can emulate and you have those mentors that you can say, I want to do that as well. Andy Yang runs Extreme Startups and believes programs like this will help entrepreneurs here keep up with Silicon Valley. For Canada, entrepreneurship, innovation, technology is, is the next wave that will power the, the economy in, well into the future. Now Katie's posting her indoor climbing class. In fact, the partners backing extreme startups hope that one of these businesses could itself be the next great Canadian tech company. These young entrepreneurs won't find out for a few days which one of them just took a step closer. 
along with these young people who may see their dreams come true, there are a couple of things worth noting here. One is that formerly laid off tech employees at places like Research in Motion are the beneficiary of this new capital influx. In fact, one of the VCs we talked to said they're spending a lot of time in Waterloo looking to see if businesses need to be married to capital. And of course, there's the importance for the rest of us. Small businesses account for 26% of the GDP, Ian, and that means, of course, if they're growing, they're hiring, they're creating a lot of value all over the place. So it's good for the entrepreneurs, but it's actually very, very good for the economy. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks.